Welcome to another episode of Another Look. This is our news and review show on the River 95.3 Sports Radio 1450, where we take a look at stories that have been happening and developing across the Shenandoah Valley over the course of the last week. We take a look at these on a Friday and sort of discuss our opinions on them, discuss what's been going on. I'm Dylan Nichols, news director here at the River 95.3. She's Janet Michael, host of the Valley Today. Janet, how you doing? I am award-winning Valley Today. How many times do I have to say? I have to specifically leave it out now because you mention it so <laughs> often. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. It's you. I just yeah. watched you okay. write it down in I, your notes but... <laughs> so you could remember to say it again. And no, she wrote it down. That was for a different award because we also have an award-winning website yeah. that I have neglected to mention the last oh. 17 episodes of this podcast. Well, not only did she write down... In in this obnoxious orange sharpie <laughs> award-winning website but she put for her own use in her own notes three exclamation points scratch 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 because it was two years in a row and it's from the associated press that's kind of a big deal oh, so you that's as what a those... news person wouldn't know anything about the associated press i'm just saying <laughs> You're right. I'm woefully ignorant. I don't ever read their yeah. stuff. And so here's where the downside to all this nonsense and grief that you give me is going to come in. Yeah. Because this is the first year you are eligible to submit your work for some of these awards. So you just wait. Because if you win, and I'm sure that you will because you – first time only, I'm actually going to do it knowing it's being recorded and on the air. Give you props. You do a phenomenal job. So we'll just Thank see you. how many times you want to reference your award-winning skills when you have awards under your belt. And then I'm going to go – no, you know what though, Janet? The difference between uh, you and here I. There we go. Let me no, put no, my no, feet no. up and let me get my coffee cup in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, humility, Janet. It's a it's a quality that I have. Okay, <laughs> no, it's, not. it's something you you meanwhile are Narcissus, and no. you are Narcissus. You know, is that like a Greek goddess? No, no, no. This I is the guy is. that was so obsessed with his reflection that he would just stare into a pond all day. Except yeah. one day he fell in. <laughs> so, Janet, you're gonna get and messed up his hair. Yeah, well, but if that's the worst that happened to him, then hey, I have an award-winning show and an award-winning website. Well, I think he actually drowned, but I don't wish that on you, Janet. I don't wish that on you. I hope you learn oh, from so your. There you uh, go. You're, yeah. yeah, see, uh, a little Greek mythology for you there. <laughs> um, so, if you're just joining us uh, on air, you can always catch what you missed here on the podcast page of Another Look at theriver953.com. This actually started off as a podcast, and what we've been doing lately here every single Friday is airing this now mm-hmm. through at, the end of October. You're going to get to hear us on Friday nights at 7. That's right. That's right. We're doing a, a little test there, and we're also trying to bring our podcast numbers up by letting people know who listen to the radio. Um, yeah, it's up. It's on our website. We've been doing it for a while, and there's just a whole – if you enjoy this, there's a whole archive of these episodes on there. Uh, they get pretty crazy too the, I mean, because the format is local news, so we get all of Janet's crazy – uh, you know, sort insightful, of – Aggressive <laughs> – it's it's insightful perspective. We get common to learn, sense. We get to learn about all her enemies across the. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. I, I swear, I feel like I'm talking to a, a consigliere in the Godfather's in touch. She's got this sort of go to the mattresses attitude about yeah, things. We're going to cover Shenandoah one of those Valley. tonight too, but that's a whole other. Yeah, oh, we're not man. there yet. So we got material to look forward to. But uh, the other thing that we do at the end of this is our. Dumb news segment, which we said we would name it something else, and, and we, we never named it something else. We're well, going to come up with a clever name, I promise you, but that's basically where we both find a dumb national news story, and it's sort of a duel to the death to see whose is better. I always win, so <laughs> stick around because it's yeah, going to be really fun. That'll be our last segment that we do, but for now, Janet, let's well, go over the stories that we picked out for today. The one thing you forgot, of course, I had it on my notes that I wrote with my obnoxious orange I can't Sharpie. see through all the exclamation um, points <laughs> and all the award mentions on there oh, yeah. as to what you're referencing. Yeah, let me... You want me draw a picture of my oh well, i don't have to draw a picture of my words because we're sitting in the studio and i can see them i am surrounded by them <laughs> folks if it sounds bad believe me being here in person it's a lot worse i mean just uh, oh hey so what we want people to do though is reach out we want interaction so Absolutely. if you're listening on the air you can send us a text 635-4121 you can email us you can go to our facebook you can go to our twitter um you can put a comment on the podcast page but we want people to know what do they think about the stories that we're covering what do they think about how all Awesome I am. Where do they think you could improve on your news? You know, all of those important <laughs> yeah. things. All That's those what we important want to know. Thing. We're interested in your interests. Yes. We want to see what, what stories yeah. you actually liked and which stories yeah. uh, you weren't that interested in. Speaking of, 
Uh, Janet, what do you got for this episode? All right. Well, I have Middletown receives traffic safety grant because, you know, I'm a Middletown resident. So, of course, I have something to say about that. Now, I was I was amazed that you were as interested in this as you were. <laughs> but we can get into that later. But I, I was just amazed that you found that that interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I found it incredibly interesting. And at the same time, was very disappointed because the downside to putting these podcasts on the air means I have to temper my enthusiasm when I'm discussing some of these stories. So you'll get yeah. the, uh, There's no the explicit PG e. version of, of what I think of Middletown receiving traffic safety grants, which I do think is a good idea, but we'll get into that. I mean, amazing, right, folks? Yeah, like amazing. they received this little traffic safety grant and she's already <laughs> – she's greasing up the torches and sharpening the pitchforks over here. I have no idea why, but keep oh, going. Oh, you're going to find out. Keep going. Um, Shenandoah County gets $3.4 million in seized assets. That is like crazy and cool all at the same time. Yeah, that drug money. It yeah. came in. Hey, I'm all about the drug money. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> can we get that? Can we use that in a commercial for yeah, this? We can use that in a promo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm all about that drug money. Another look. Uh, and then the one that was a little disturbing, Frederick County charges first man under the revenge porn law. I was actually fascinated by that because I'd never heard of that law before. I'd never heard of it either. Um, and I have a few things to say about, you know, not the law itself because I, I think, A, I think it's sad that we have to have that law. But can we just yeah. talk for a minute about the people that, you know, are in these photos? And yeah, but we'll talk about Let's that not. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, OK, so what I have basically is and I see that you printed this out, too, before we came here, because we've got our stories in front of us a lot of the time. Um, this new suspension center that Shenandoah Public Schools has uh, put together. Uh, it, coincidentally, right, as these Strasburg fights have been happening, maybe there's yeah. some sort of uh, uh, correlation there. And um, also, I'm very excited because a lot of developments going on. Mm -hmm. We've got we've been talking about this corner of North Kent and East Piccadilly streets being developed, and that's um, sort of the controversy of this historic buildings being demolished so it can go up. But the upside is is that you're going to get forty some odd new apartments yep. and some commercial space. And the fun doesn't stop there because this week the Winchester Tower site may be developed. We're just finding out that there are some interested parties and the EDA is going to decide who the lucky girl is. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. And also Tevis Street is going to be extended and it's going to be extended to the Heritage Commons site where 645 residential units – and 100,000 square feet of commercial space are going to go. Yeah. Big doors. I looked at it on Google Maps before we started recording to kind of refresh where Tevis was exactly. And now I'm very excited about where it's going to go, not because of the houses, but because it's going to get me across town faster. Yeah, has... exactly. Well, this thing is going over 81. So, <laughs> oh, I know, right? Yeah. So we've got a, a lot to talk about. Um, and we're going to revisit this. I think we're going to have Janet go first All in right. the next segment. And we're going to find out exactly yes. why she's so mad about this teeny tiny little safety grab Middletown receipt. <laughs> When we come back with some more, another look. It's an award-winning lunch hour every day at noon with the News at Noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at theriver953.com. That's theriver953.com. And welcome back to another look, our News in Review on air show where we review news from across the Shenandoah Valley. I, I almost said podcast, but we're airing this one as yeah. well. So you could be listening uh, to this thing, which is recorded on air uh, <laughs> at seven o'clock. I just flashed to a Christmas story to this thing, you know, and this thing with which tells time. <laughs> the the BB gun, his Red Rider BB gun, has this thing which tells time. I think. What are you talking it's about? Compass. Okay. It's, yeah. Now I'm rambling. Thanks it's a lot, a, Dylan. I don't know. Look at what you've done to me. <laughs> we had such a nice, tight segment before. This is the part of the show where it all collapses. Yeah. But I, uh, when we were talking before the break, we were talking about uh, Janet going first, yep. sharing some of her news stories um, that we've been talking about. And one news story that happened earlier this week was Middletown received a traffic safety grant. And Janet is apparently up in arms about this. <laughs> Not exactly sure why. The tar and by the way, Janet, tell them exactly how high the stakes are, how how massive this traffic safety grant is and why everyone should just be talking about this like you are and just in a in a buzz about this. So, middle they've gotten a grant for $3500. 
That Whoa! I- <laughs> Whoa! $3,500? Yes. What is that, like five Xbox Ones? the town is going to have to match half of that. So the DMV is, was from a, a grant from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, don't even get me started on them. Is But they have to match half <laughs> yeah. the grant of $3,500. So that means half of that $3,500 is coming out of my taxpaying pocket. Yeah. Which, normally... So how much is half of $3,500? I don't know. I don't do math. Does today end in Y? It's a, what if it does, it? then I don't do math. What is it, seventeen fifty? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I'll, se- I'll just go with you. $1,750 split across the entire populace of Middletown. Yeah, all 14 of us. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a yeah. good question. What is the population it's of Middletown? It's not much. You know? Is it like a few thousand? Probably. If, yeah. If it, yeah. In Middletown proper, I mean, because we're part of Frederick County, and then, you know, you've only got the actual town and the town limits. and. But say like 4,000 uh, is yeah. an estimate. Say I know 4, that 000. only 432 people voted in the local election. Election four years ago for mayor. So 442 people. Yeah, I think that was the, yeah. Wow. And you got some of those votes too. Yeah, didn't we're you? not talking about that. <laughs> that. That's a whole nother. I can tell you what, if we did this $3,500. <laughs> Mrs. Mayor. So here's my beat. I think it's great. I've had Chief Gary Benedict on the Valley today, shortly after he took the job. I think he's a really great guy. I have no issues whatsoever with our police department in Middletown. They do a fantastic job. I like them all. That being said, it's a little annoying that this grant is going to be used. Um, It's a traffic safety grant. So it says um, it will be used for traffic safety purposes from October 1st through September of 2019. Middletown Police Chief Gary Benedict Jr. was quoted as saying that the money will be used to cover overtime costs for traffic enforcement and that it will help to send an officer from the department to a conference on traffic safety. Trouble areas in the town like Main Street and Reliance Road will continue to be a priority for the monitoring. Here's my beef. Okay. If we didn't shut down Main Street 4,000 times in a year, we wouldn't have overtime that we have to pay the police officers to reroute traffic on a major thoroughfare such as Route 11. So let me start with that. Okay. Now, what are these events that you're talking about? I'm not familiar with the Middletown festivities, but I I, I feel like I Oh, I don't know. Is the sky covering... blue today? Let's close Main Street and have a parade. <laughs> there are that many, really? It feels like there's that many. Yeah. I mean, there's 4th of July, there's Christmas, there's let's shut down Main Street to have a farm-to-table dinner, there's a car show. The car show, there's, I remember covering that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it seems like every other month, Main Street is being closed down. But here's the question, because this grant is effective for, what do you say, October to December? October 1st through September of next year. Oh, through September of next year. All yeah. right, so it's all year long, and we're going to have all those spray. And you think that yeah. it's pretty much the overtime cost. It's pretty much managing traffic during the That years. would be my assumption. And then, you know, and I get traffic safety, but come on. We have one traffic light in Middletown. How much traffic safety can there really be? Janet, I, I have to say you're sounding a little grinchy right now. I am feeling a little grinchy. You want less holidays. You want less <laughs> parades. <laughs> you're, you're looking down at all the who's in Middletown. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where, okay, so we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we want people to reach out. So all of yeah. my peeps that live in Middletown that get as annoyed as I do every time you turn around, it seems like they're closing Main Street down. Send us a text, 635-4121. Send me an email, Janet at the river 953com and tell me, am I being a Grinch or is it just a little much? I mean, there are some of these events can be done off of Main Street. We have fire departments. We have church parking lots. We have a park. For heaven's sake, in Middletown, that some of these events can happen at that does not require shutting down Route 11. I want to see that Twitter poll. The Is Janet a Grinch <laughs> Twitter poll? No, 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 no. no, no. Text, that text is way direct too open and ended. connect 635 4121 if you want to see that Twitter poll and participate in that. <laughs> and seriously, guys, it, it, we don't get enough texts. Seriously, text and let us know what you're thinking about uh, all this stuff because yeah. it's nice to hear Because people your are going to say, Yeah, go, Janet. I know what you're talking about. We close down these streets way too often. I'm not against the guys getting overtime. I think, you know, cops should get whatever that we talked in the last episode. Um, You can hear it on the podcast page about one of my things for taxpayer dollars. I will give it to the schools. I got no problem. I will also give it to firefighters. I will also give it to police officers, any law enforcement. But some of the stuff doesn't need to be. They should be spending that money on training, spending that money on uniforms, spending that money on dogs, on things like that, not 
because, you know, the politicians in <laughs> our town decide oh. they want to have a warm fuzzy because they're oh. friends with the Redskins and they want to come rolling on down Main Street some crazy day. Hey, you're getting awful specific okay, that's there. It. We're not on a podcast. We're on the air. I got to tone it down now. Hoorah, 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 hoorah. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it right now. All right. What else you got? Because we're already uh, like, we okay, blow so through like half that segment there. Along that, Shenandoah County, $3.4 million in seized assets. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a lot of crystal meth right so, there. <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, we, have, not, we have a problem. I don't know how much it goes for, so it may not be that much. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, I assume they're not turning around and selling the crystal meth themselves once they confiscate it. But you know what I mean? Seized assets, yeah. uh, forfeitures, and all that kind of stuff. They, Yeah, they got 3.4 million dollars. And it's funny because basically it's very interesting to learn how this goes down because what it sounds like is they get assistance from federal agencies in cracking down on uh, these sorts of drug-related crimes for the most part because of the opioid epidemic. A lot more money is going towards that. And so as a result, when they confiscate assets because federal agencies are involved – Uh, It goes to these sort of – I don't want to say secretive, but it's spread out amongst like eight different accounts and the people who are in control of those accounts, it's unnamed. And what it sounded like is basically like it was sort of controlled by these government agencies who confiscated the money and what Shenandoah County did is it basically said, hey, can we have this money? It was confiscated in our area and our own law enforcement was involved in the confiscation of all these assets. Uh, and all these forfeited funds. And I, I think it's great. I think it's ironic that they're going to use the money to build a new sheriff's headquarters. Because I joked with you before we went on the air about crime really does pay. It's just not paying to the people that think that it does. Yeah. But, and I get it. I mean, it makes sense. Say they, you know, they arrest some drug kingpin who's living in this big mansion and driving all the fancy cars because you know that's what they do in the movies. So of course that's what they do in real life. Yeah, but they we're get talking to- <laughs> about Shenandoah County. <laughs> Who's this drug kingpin? I think know. we would have noticed this El Chapo fella. <laughs> Living in Shenandoah County. But still, I mean, they confiscate his car. They take his house. They sell those. And I think that's where this money comes from. It's the forfeiture of assets that they have to give up as part of their, you know. Right. I mean, it's exciting that yeah. it's exciting to know that there's that much progress. What's well, going to offset? I mean, eight point seven million dollars. It's going to cost to build that sheriff's um, headquarters in Shenandoah County. Another ten point seven million for a public safety radio system. And now almost three and a half million of that has been covered. That is fantastic. I think that's awesome. And yeah. more localities should be arresting more people and taking all their money so they can build new things, too. No, it's it's to a good cause, and it, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. Maybe Shenandoah County should take over Middletown and tell them they can't close the streets anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it, just it just plant drugs on all yeah. the parades and. The, all right, yeah. So, how much time do I have left to talk about revenge porn? Are you are you looking at the clock and telling me I got like no time whatsoever? No, you got about five minutes. All right, you so, got a full five minutes. That's an eternity yeah. on air. So let's talk about this. And to be clear, yeah, because uh, what you said was kind of vague there. <laughs> Uh, the, there was the first man who was charged under revenge porn law in Frederick County is the story that we're covering. We're not just talking about <laughs> <laughs> revenge porn as Janet may have made that sound. Janet, t- tell us about the story. All right. So uh, the law was established in 2014. It prevents the shaming of an individual through the dissemination or sale of images in which they appear nude. And this guy, Donald Rosenquist Jr. of Alpine Road, was charged after his ex-girlfriend began receiving Facebook messages from strange men trying to connect with her. Now, the, yeah, that's the that's the really scary thing yes. about this because he – and this Rosenquist guy, he not only Slumble. released this video but released – the, the hometown and the yeah. name of this Warren County woman. And then all of these people, yeah, all these people see this and all of these other creepers start reaching out to her saying, hey, I saw your video. Be- I- because, because it takes 10 yes. seconds for you to find with someone's hometown and complete yeah. name takes 10 seconds for you to find them online or on Facebook or whatever. And this, the worst part about all that is, as if that wasn't bad enough, the guy didn't even release, I don't think, his full name. No. I think he just released like his first name and didn't release his hometown or anything in the video. Um, yeah. It was really strange, but his account of things, he didn't seem aggressive no. or – I mean because the law is termed revenge porn, but it wasn't a vengeful act what he did. 
it sounded like kind of a he sick was kick trying thing. to brag and say, "Hey, look at this hot chick that I have as a girlfriend." Yeah. And again, ill. I mean, really? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think it's and 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 the social media person in me says you can't take that stuff down. I mean, you can physically go in and delete it, but it takes less than a second to screenshot. It takes no time to right mouse click and save an image or a video. You know, there are so many ways that people can save this stuff once it's out there. Yeah. Just don't, hey, don't take these types of photos. I've been married to my husband for 20 years. I love him to death. He's got no pictures of me naked, and that might be a good thing. <laughs> but, I mean, you just don't. I, I, I don't know. That, that gets into a whole other show, I'm sure. But if you don't ever get yourself into a position where those photos are then out there for some guy to brag about or to say, hey, I'm going to get even with you. I'm going to throw these pictures up and let the kids' teachers at school see them. I mean, it's. I, I think this law is fantastic, and they need to. No, it's, it's great that they did something about this. I want to make it clear: um, this segment is not open to text direct and connect. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't want to see or hear anything about your personal lives. Keep it to yourself on this one. No Twitter poll here. But it is. I mean, I, I'm glad to see that the laws are finally starting to catch up with some of the technology that yeah. is out there. So. I think that's that's fantastic. So that, yeah. and that would be all I have because it would be ridiculous to talk about you know Front Royal voting against a pipe installation following a revenge porn <laughs> story. So we're just going to save that one maybe for another podcast at another time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that one behind. Uh, we pretty much hit the level here that we want to hit. Um, so yeah, when we come back, I've got a couple things I want to talk about. I want to talk about some of these new developments that are happening. Um, there's this Tevis Street extension which will connect with the Heritage Commons site where there's going to be a ton of new residential mm -hmm. units. We're talking in the hundreds and 100,000 square feet of new commercial space that's going to be developed. Um, so we're going to talk about that and kind of hash that out. We're also going to talk about Winchester Towers, which looks like it might finally get developed as well, but not as they originally planned. So a little twist there. But all this is kind of happening at the same time as this North Kent yep. East Piccadilly Street development that we've been talking boom. about forever. A building Boom. So we're going to talk about all that, and we're going to talk about this new suspension center for Shenandoah Public Schools, which seems suspiciously connected to yeah. the Strasburg fights that were happening. So we'll touch on all that when we come back with some more Another Look. It's an award-winning lunch hour, every day at noon, with the News at Noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at theriver953.com. That's the river 953.com. And welcome back to some more Another Look. This is our news in review show. It's our on air show right now. It was and has been and still is our podcast, which you can always find on the river953.com. Just go to our podcast page of Another Look on the river953.com, and you can see not only this episode, in case you missed anything or missed our first two segments, which, by the way, were dynamite. <laughs> you can go check those out, or you can go back through the archives and see all the other. Uh, podcast episodes, which, by the way, are much racier than this. 17 or 18. I know, racier yeah, I than I mean, because <laughs> we, we really can get into it, and we can swear on the podcast, and we can do all sorts of stuff. We have to be tame on air, and we have to be respectful of people was, on air as that, well. What I was, is that, yeah, I didn't get that memo, <laughs> or else maybe we should redo my segment from the last time. I know. I don't yeah. tell you these things yes. until after your segment. Yep. I'm Dylan Nichols, news director here at the River 953, in case you're just joining us. She's Janet Michael, host of The Valley Today. The what? The Valley Today, which I guess won an award at some point. Uh, or something. Multiple awards. Yeah, yeah it's an award-winning show. And the website's <laughs> award-winning, too. So yeah, check that and out. I'm also in charge of it. So, bleh. <laughs> All right, enough plugs. Enough plugs. Enough self-serving plugs. We don't need this. Um, let's talk first about, because it's my turn now. We All got the stories I picked yeah, out. So this boring section. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's called the bureaucratic section. I love this bureaucratic ah, stuff because when things finally, because I read about things for months and months and months, these things are developing. And when they finally come to fruition, I mean, it feels like Christmas King because <laughs> it takes so long for some of this stuff to get through. These meetings are spaced out like a week or two weeks apart. And, and I know about none of it. And then it happens. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And you're like, seriously, I've only been covering this for six months. Yeah. <laughs> Janet, this is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. My whole life has been coming up to this. But I mean, let's talk about this because Winchester is doing a ton of and I'm I, honestly, I feel like these are incredibly important developments um, because I think that. 
I mean, across the United States, there's a bit of a housing crisis yes. going on. And affordable housing crisis. It's That's a struggle to find yeah. uh, affordable housing. And the Shenandoah Valley also has a wage issue, mm-hmm. I feel. And so if for us to basically have all of this, these new apartments, all of these new residential units coming, I mean, I'm really hoping it's going to bring some of this down. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice. And it, we've got a lot of new stuff. What we've been talking about on the podcast, and I think even we touched on this in our last on-air episode, if I'm not mistaken, I could be. But we've definitely been talking about it over the course of the podcast is this uh, development uh, on the corner of North Kent and East Piccadilly Streets, yes. that northeast corner. And that's been – in talks for a while, finally going through, they had a bit of a scrabble with uh, the historians of Winchester uh, because the – and you know the name of the society. The, the Histori- Preservation of Historic Winchester. The preservation of Historic Winchester. Um, it, you know, the, basically there was a building there that's from 1850 was when it was built. So they had some objections to in all five historic buildings that mm-hmm. were on that corner. Um, but they just got permissions to demolish them, uh, to make room for this new development. Mixed feelings on that. Um, I certainly have mixed feelings on something as old as from 1850. I think that's pretty cool, especially because a Confederate soldier lived there. But all that said, 45 to 48, I think, new apartments are going to be going in that development along with a little bit of retail space. And now the news that's been happening this week is that the Winchester Tower site might be developed. And you might be thinking, oh, they're finally going to uh, go ahead and do the developments they originally planned to do, which was a downtown hotel and conference center. But no, it looks like actually, and this isn't finalized at all, but it looks like they're going to go in a bit of a different direction and do a mixed-use structure with apartments and retail space. Hey. So I'm just tickled. Um, I go back a ways. So I remember when that building was still standing, first of all, um, and it was called Darlington Towers. And it was, I think, a hotel. I don't remember exactly. But then it was apartments. I think there was an Eagles Club or something underneath of it. I used to go there in high school and you could take your own bottle and it's a whole other thing. It's a whole other show. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's, a whole, that's a whole other thing. An Eagles Club. Um, I think it was Eagles. It might have been somebody else. I don't remember. It's one of those clubs you had to be a member of. And one of my girlfriend's father was a member. And, and oh. yeah, but it was a bring your own bottle club. So you couldn't go there to buy drinks, but you could keep drinks there. And you just go in and tell them what your name and they pull your bottle out from the bar and – Oh, okay. Uh, way before your time. You know, back in the 1850s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like you're describing a speakeasy. Is that yeah, kind <laughs> is of, yeah. That what this is? But I think it's great because China? it's right across from the George Washington Hotel. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm okay with them putting apartments and things like that in there because we do have the hotel right across the street. And it's right down the street from where they're going to put these other apartments. So everything is going to be walkable for people to get to downtown, which I love. I love Old Town Winchester. And I, I think that's cool, too, like what you just described. Because yep. what it could really do for Winchester is really kind of revitalize and make it a very uh, a cool place to be. Yeah. I mean, when things are in walking distance like that and you've got people out in the streets, uh, it, it brightens everything up. Yes. So it, it, it uh, provided, of course, the right space and – you know, if they're ground floor apartments, that's a whole other thing. But the important thing to point out with this Winchester Tower site is I say maybe developed, may, 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 maybe. I mean, nothing's been finalized yet. In fact, they, so Lynx Ventures, uh, a developer from Richmond, and Matchbox Realty and Management Services, a develop, developer, excuse me, from Harrisonburg, they've both shown interest. Um, and they've responded to Winchester's request for qualifications that they sent out on the site's development. It it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't yeah. mean that they're, they're still, still going to show about interest. Talking. <laughs> I mean, it, we don't know how financially viable this space would be for them. And of course, the Winchester Tower site developments fallen through before. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah. But basically, I think the EDA must be tickled right now because they've got interest and they've got these two guys um, showing that they might be game. Uh, and they can kind of play this game of pick between them. So we're really hoping something's going to yeah. happen there. Um, and not only is that happening, but something even way more massive than that in hmm. Frederick County overall is this Tevis Street extension. Just to build this – basically, they're going to extend Tevis Street so it reaches the Heritage Common site where they're planning on developing 645 residential units, 100,000 square feet of commercial space. Um, it's being planned by this developer, Hunt Companies Incorporated, um, and they – are so all in on this apparently that they're going to match VDOT funds for a project to extend Tavis Street to the Heritage Commons site 
And that's going to cost $20.6 million. Well, didn't you say it was going over 81? It's going over 81. It's a flyover. Oh, that's going to be so awesome. That's going to be pretty cool. Well, I'm not going to go on it because, you know, it's a bridge, which is an overpass. And we covered that in episode, what, episode two, I think, of the podcast series. Oh, yeah. Episode two, Janet's Irrational Fears. (laughs) You can look it up online on theriver953.com. Just go to our podcast page. That's theriver953.com. We're going to get as many of these shameless plugs in there as possible. But, yeah, so, it, so that's another huge development. Um, not too many details on that. There's more details really on this flyover. Um, so not only is there going to be this flyover over 81, but uh, there's also going to be an extension of Airport Road. Um, and there's also going to be a traffic circle as a part of all this stuff. And it's just – I mean it's going to cost so much money just to build this It's going to take 40 years. I don't know that I'm ever going to see it come to fruition in my lifetime. That's my concern. But if I look yeah. – because I looked on – because I was trying to remember where Tevis Street was. Um, so I pull it up on Google Maps and then I'm like, oh, OK, it's here. Oh, wait. I, yeah, if it's going to connect to 522, I think there's already some construction going on on 522 near Airport Road. That is probably like the beginning stages because usually when they're doing those, they go ahead and do the pull offs and where they may end up putting roads. They don't put curb and guttering and and things like that there alongside the road. So that would be awesome to be able to get from 522 to Olive Garden without having to go all the way in and around town or cut out and go around the cemetery and. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I can tell that from the look in your face. No, I don't go to Winchester. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I'm actually – I'm from out of our coverage area technically, just barely. <laughs> I'm, I'm 20 minutes out to the east of it. The outskirts. We so, call that the outskirts. The outskirts? Yeah. I call it the inskirts. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think it's going to be awesome. I'm – I you know – it's exciting to see uh, some movement on these projects, um, and we want to hear your thoughts on these, too, and want to know what you think, especially about that uh, East Piccadilly, North Kent development, because that was controversial, too. There were some historic buildings there. So if you feel like letting us know what you think about all that, go ahead and text direct and connect 635-4121. That's 635-4121. Just text us your opinion. And if you missed um, the show on the air last week, again, the podcasts are all up on the website. They're actually up on the website before the show airs on the air at 7. You Usually yeah. the podcasts are already there. Um, at the bottom of each podcast page, you can leave a comment. So if you go to that one, I think it was called Demolitions something and Police Impersonators. I it don't starts remember. with Demolitions. Yeah, yeah. Your names are very creative. I know Janet. they are. I do try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can listen to the podcast there. And then there's a comment section underneath on that podcast page. You can say, hey, I agree. I think this is horrible. Or no, this is a great way because we need XYZ. So you yeah. can leave comments for us there too. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one other thing I want to talk about is uh, this new Shenandoah Public School Suspension Center, <laughs> which uh, the second I read this, I had visions of children fighting in my head. See, because, and I didn't. It didn't even occur to me until yeah. you said that a little while ago. I believe it was Strasburg High School, yes. right? Okay, so basically what happened was there were a few separate fights in Strasburg High School. I don't even remember how many kids were involved. or I think what I remember reading, two separate fights – um, and uh, one was in a gym and another one was by the lockers and just pushing, shoving. And it, it was all sort of caused, or so they said, from social media uh, yeah. interactions over the summer. I guess tensions just built and built <laughs> and built. And these kids were stewing, just going, when I get back in school, I swear. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get that girl when I get back in school. And they just, they got so mad. And then, of course, they were all back in school together. And then, you know, it just takes one kid. So glad we didn't have thing. social media when I was in school. Oh, yeah? yeah. You guys would have gone crazy? Uh, yeah, it would have been. It would have been ugly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I kind of I, I read through this uh, this afternoon before we came on the air and the things that jumped out at me were on average schools have one to three students out on suspension during any given week. First of all, that's a bit. That's that's a red flag. I mean, well, that I seems... mean, and that's the, that's in the whole school system too, though. Well, that's true. So okay. that's a so lot that's not of kids. So bad. It's not just um, Strasburg High School. But about. And, and the thing that tickled me about the the next sentence that you write is designed to house fifteen students at a time. The goal of the suspension center is to engage students with behavior problems instead of punishing them. Okay, well, you know that when you get suspended, back in my day, <laughs> it used to be all right. We got suspended. We have a day off from school. So the fact that you're now making them go to school and do schoolwork, you're, they're just not getting to go to class with their friends, is kind of punishing them. Oh, it's, so I mean, it's, it's still awful. a punishment. It's just all in how you frame it. No, I, and it, to be honest, the concept of suspension never made sense to me because that's exactly it. Like you get to stay home it's a day off. for a day and I don't know, maybe your parents punish you when you're home. But, you know, chances are But they're are going too, to work, so they don't know what you're doing when you're home. And chances are, too, if you're having behavior problems, that could indicate that you don't have a great home life, maybe. And maybe your parents are absent. Whoa, way to be judgmental. 
smile there, Dylan. And I know there's some kid sitting listening to this who's in suspension right now going, I have a great mom and dad, <laughs> and you don't know what you're talking about. And I don't. Yeah. So yeah, well, don't, don't take personal. Here was the other thing that I thought was interesting. So you also say that um, the center will allow the school system to stop counting suspended students as absent during the time they are away from classes, improving attendance rates and making the district more eligible for accreditation. I can never say that word. Isn't that an interesting little that wrinkle? Is, yeah. So not only does it make logical sense to actually punish kids by punishing them, but not punishing them. Yeah. But punishing them, but yeah. not punishing them and not their parents <laughs> i don't know this because it is punishment yeah but but it's true that it's better to actually have them in a classroom with teachers uh as the punishment than to have them like out of school but not only do they get to achieve a more sensible version of suspension where the kids actually learn and are productive and actually have to do something but on top of that it helps them with their accreditation yeah. and if you remember shenandoah county has had trouble with that in the past uh so they i think they had like two or three schools that are having trouble meeting standards uh and they were more optimistic this year i don't know if those results came in they kept saying the end of summer and i'd have to look up and whether or not if, those yeah. results came in because it's now september well and it never occurred to me that suspensions would count against attendance because yeah. to me that wasn't somebody choosing to stay home <laughs> That was somebody being told, you're not coming here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. So you'd think that would be like a wash and it, you know, it's like, well, you know, I was going to use a baseball analogy, but, you know, somebody get, you know, a, a batter comes up to bat and they get a walk. That doesn't count as an at bat. So to me, a, a suspension shouldn't count as an absence because. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, um. It's interesting, but I think that'll help them out a lot, and I think they'll have less trouble meeting accreditation in the future. So a lot more than meets the eye with that headline. There's yeah. a lot more to that yep. story. So um, do we have time? Are we going to break? Do we have time to touch on one more thing? We're kind of gone right now. Okay. We're kind of over time. All right, fine. Let's get to the, the – the, the, That's to the most important part? Yeah. Do you mean to dumb news? You can't say the most important part. This is supposed to be the most important part. This is the, the most, most substantive part. For part. Us. The most fun part for us. It isn't work. It doesn't feel like work anymore. It's our it's our little uh, duel, uh, duel win. of wits, where win. we basically I'm just uh, exchange <laughs> dumb national news stories uh, and see whose was the best. So you I'm got that win. to look forward to when I'm going to win, when we come back with more than a look. It's an award-winning lunch hour, every day at noon, with the News at Noon and Valley Today. Listen live on air, online, or on demand at theriver953.com. That's theriver953.com. And welcome back to some more Another Look. This is our news and review show, uh, normally a podcast, but we're doing it on air this month. We're very excited about that. Um, and this is the most important portion, the dumb news portion. This is where we each have a dumb news story. We try to see whose is better. We use all of our storytelling skills to bring it to you in the most compelling way possible. This is dumb news from across the country, sometimes the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. It's a pretty incredible segment. No one else is doing this. It's tremendous. It's big league. And now it's coming straight to your ears. Janet, are you ready? I'm ready. You go first. All right. We talked about it. And full disclosure, she already knows this story. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Because, it, because we because both I picked the same it. story. Yeah. We had this moment where I was just yeah. like, can you give me a hint what yours is just so I know we don't have the right one? I said, yeah, where's yours at? And you said Florida. And I said, oh, mine too. And you said, well, is yours a guy or a woman? I'm like, a guy? And you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then it started. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'll point out, as I did before we came back from the break, um, that means I went either way. <laughs> I don't think that's true because it's all about the storytelling ability. And Janet, I'm gonna win. if there's anything I, <laughs> I can, win, if there's anything I can do, yeah, it's spin a yarn. Well, there is that. So I, yeah, let me let me grab my cup and prop up my feet and get ready for story time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, basically, um, this is a story about a man. <laughs> I would some would argue a good man. A man who basically, I mean, this is no criminal. Usually these are criminals on here. This is just a guy who's just enjoying life. He's out in his yard doing the simple things. He's working on his car. He's uh, mowing his lawn. Um, he's bending over to pick up sticks and uh, put them in his little burn pile and his little waste thing. Uh, maybe he's tying his shoes. Um <laughs> The only thing is, is that this man also happens to be completely naked. <laughs> he doesn't put on clothes ever. I mean, he lives in Florida, so I guess the temperature allows for that. 
Um, but his neighbors are not happy about this, and this has escalated to be like a just a feud of civil war proportions in his neighborhood. People are extremely upset. Um, one mo- woman, Melissa, uh, who's one of his neighbors, said, "I came, <laughs> I came out Sunday night to put the trash out, and I look over, and he is bent over winding up his hose." <laughs> And I'm like, that is my view Wait, of the neighborhood. What? I don't know if that's like a double entendre or what's going on there, but I, I, I assume that she means the garden hose. But it's, I, I mean, unbelievable what this guy's getting wrong with. He, he is indeed working on his car. He is indeed pushing the lawnmower around. He's doing all the normal stuff just completely naked. And he's in a crowded neighborhood. And as one other person put it, have some respect for the neighborhood kids. Kids catch the bus here. It's wrong, <laughs> said Charlie Estes. So and people are upset to the point where they've called the sheriff. But this is what the sheriff is saying about this guy. The sheriff is saying, look, I can't do anything. My hands are tied because he's on private property. He's allowed to be naked on private property. He's not allowed to be naked on public property. So there's really not much I can do. But the sheriff says... What I can do is I can basically compile all your complaints, make a case, and possibly get a warrant, and then go over there and warn him and say to him, like, look, you need to stop doing this because otherwise we are going to arrest you because we have enough complaints where we actually have made this like a civil issue. (laughs) Um, The funniest thing, though, every single time the sheriff goes over to talk to him, he's completely nude. (laughs) So the sheriff is just sitting there like talking to him (laughs) as he's completely nude. And my favorite line from the whole story, Janet, the television station spoke with the nude gardener. (laughs) The nude gardener. Like the Boston Strangler. It's totally going to be the next series on HGTV. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. The television station spoke with the nude gardener who declined to be interviewed. He said he was not interested in being interviewed because he and his family were private people. Well, it did say that he has only recently begun to venture outside. <laughs> oh, so this was a big step for him. Apparently, yeah. Wow. You know, you know what? Yeah. Good for this guy. <laughs> Good for this guy. He was – and it, let this be a lesson to anyone who's listening to this. He was scared. He was scared to be himself out in public. He was scared to show the world his goods. <laughs> And now here he is, and he's come such a being long way. Being criticized for it. And being criticized for it. <laughs> Persecuted. Yeah. I bet, you know, I mean, at least he's mowing his grass. At least he's fixing his cars. These at all, least, you know. These all sound like euphemisms when the guy's <laughs> naked. Like, it, it, it just sounds really, like, hey, bad to me. You lost me at wrapping up his hose. That was, that was, it was all I remember me at that point. <laughs> Are we allowed to say that? I don't know what we're allowed to say. All right, Janet, why don't you go to your story now? Okay. So, uh, meanwhile, in Oklahoma. Yeah. And I have, you know, well, we won't get into my history with Oklahoma people, but go Baker Mayfield. Ha ha. Way to win that game. Um, so, Dylan, what did we have for lunch to, here at the station today? Pizza. And where did that pizza come from? Domino's. Yeah. And we've ordered Domino's several times over the last couple of weeks, last month, month and a half. Oh, Janet, it's our go-to. It is. They have your little veggie concoction thing. That, you mean that, my Mediterranean pizza yeah, that, that allows me to eat pizza? Yeah. yeah. And then they have those Parmesan twists that I love. And, you know, we those get fairly simple, easy pizzas. I mean, Sorry, are they a sponsor? Or is it? Yeah. Well, I, but, you know, <laughs> I got to give you some background. All right. All right. Yeah. Some background. Yeah. Yeah. So we get a cheese pizza. We get a pepperoni pizza. And then we get your fancy schmancy vegetable the nonsense. The Mediterranean delight. Yeah. So imagine what would happen if we ordered one of those pizzas and the order was wrong. What would you do? How angry would that make you if they put meat on your vegetarian pizza? All right. My first reaction, um, sheer panic. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) After that, anger would set in. I'd probably throw the pizza against a wall, uh, and then it would be scorched earth. I would get in my little Volvo and putter over to the Domino's and make a scene, frankly. So uh, are you from Oklahoma? Is that what happened? No, come on. An Did angry, he actually... An angry Domino's pizza customer was arrested and charged with assault and battery after attacking a restaurant employee for allegedly getting his order wrong. Attacked the guy? Milton Ray Davis, identified as the customer by police, reportedly called night manager Mike Merkel around 11 p.m. to make a complaint about the incorrect order. According to Merkel, he offered to make the man a new pizza. I apologized to him, said, hey, I'll be happy to remake your pizza. No big deal. And then he started getting belligerent and cussing the manager out. 
Davis later stormed into the Guthrie, Guthrie, Oklahoma pizza restaurant with his pie to confront the manager in person. He came in the door and slammed the pizza down and immediately started yelling and screaming and going off the deep end, Merkel says. Insecurity footage from the restaurant. Oh, great. Great. Do you have links? <laughs> oh, we got to include links. Davis is seen going around the counter and harassing Merkel. According to Merkel, Davis was demanding his money back for the order and then demanded more money for the tip he said he gave the delivery driver. Likely story. Give me back my $25. Something about he tipped my driver $25, Merkel said. No, not in this town. Trust me, not in this town. (laughs) So he declined to give back the $25. Davis attacked him physically and put him in a headlock. What? He just lost what little control he had, came around the corner, threw me in a headlock, slung me around, physically slung me around behind the counter. Quickly, Davis released Merkel and continued to yell at him and eventually took a stance that Merkel said he looked like he was ready for me to take a swing at him. Merkel said he's had angry customers before, but it's never gotten physical. Dude, come on, he said to KFOR. It's just pizza, man. Some people get really (laughs) mad over the stupidest things. Police were called to the scene and soon after found Davis, who reportedly admitted to what he did. I believe his words were, sometimes you just need to take a charge. (laughs) He has pled not guilty to the assault charge. But there's video evidence. Yeah. It's all there. I this yeah. I mean it's It's not it's not good enough that Domino's is agreeing to fill the potholes of towns across the country. Is that for real? But or now, is that, was that a commercial stunt or is that actually I'm for not real? sure. I asked Doug Stanley because, you know, we're getting a new Domino's in Front Royal. And I asked Doug Stanley, Warren County Administrator, when he was here a couple of weeks ago, if he was going to reach out to Domino's and maybe kind of on the sly point out a few problems that he thought would be easier for them to fix than, <laughs> than for him to deal with. But Honestly, you know. I honestly, yeah. there is some mysteriously so, yeah. paved areas near my house. I live but, in Dela Plain, so it could be Domino's. I can tell you because my ex-husband's from Oklahoma. They a bunch of crazies out there. <laughs> That's all well, I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Let's not stereotype yeah. to find yeah. people of Oklahoma. But, well, I mean, can you imagine? No. I- insane. Insane. And I worked in customer service for a while. It's a miserable job already. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How, that's the, the only I, way it could get any worse. Our little guy, Joe, that has brought our pizza every single time we've ordered it, salt of the earth, always tells us to have a great day. I heard him today. He was really nice. Fantastic I didn't guy. get to see him, so, but I heard and, him. and to answer your earlier question, no Domino's isn't an advertiser, but free pizza would go a long way to getting you a good rate on the air. <laughs> Domino's. Call Janet. Janet. Domino. Janet Michael wants Are you, you listening? Uh, wants you to be the lunch sponsor of the rally today. I'm just saying. That, that would be pretty Because that pizza incredible. is expensive when you order three pizzas and Parmesan and sodas and, you know. I owe you a lot of pizza cheap. money. I, I'm starting cheap. to realize I owe you a lot of know, pizza money. With your $16.66. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But it, by the way, because we have a little more time, uh, there's a there's another food-related story that's been driving me nuts this week. Can someone explain to me, please text, direct, and connect 635-4121 and explain. Explain to me why the story about the Manassas guy that rubbed his butt on an <laughs> eggplant or something is going viral and was covered on the ABC7 nightly news. See, this are is why I tell dumb? you, don't eat vegetables. This is why vegetables are bad for you. Because anyone can rub yeah. their butts on that yeah. stuff. You don't see people doing that with frozen hamburger. And if they do, no. it's you just wipe it off and move on. But you don't know what, you know. You don't hang out in the same circles I hang out, Shannon. <laughs> but... <laughs> But beyond that, no, I, th- th- that actually – that story made me feel good about produce. You know why? Because they threw out like pallets of the stuff when he did it to one like bit of produce. But apparently ABC7 covered the story and I yeah, I swear I like lost my mind because they covered the story at, and I had just seen it on the AP ticker, the Associated <laughs> Press ticker wow. that I have to read from sometimes. And I I'd, I'd seen it on there. And there's only like seven stories on there from across the state. So I was just like, how is this get priority? And is this really the only Nova story? It was a slow news day. A really slow news day, apparently. Or it was a hungry news day. I mean, (laughs) unbelievable. But ABC7 basically reported on it. And their whole catch you like, you know, oh, you're the hook phrase that they used was basically like, let's hear the and we'll hear the. Other side of the story from the man who rubbed his butt on produce when we come back <laughs> with some more nightly news. I was like, 
his side of the story. <laughs> his back. What did Sally was here that day? And she goes, yeah, oh, his backside. The backside of the, <laughs> the story. The backside of the story. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> so, and I have to give, you know, Sally a quick shout out because that she, story came from her. All She she has sent me like 15 stories in the yeah. last week of, so I have stories, you know, for the next couple. I have one that I'm, I'm saving until, until later. But thankfully she did because, you know, you stole my story. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I really did. And I yeah. only came up with one. You came in loaded to bear. Oh, yeah. And I, I need some help in that regard. So again, text direct and connect some links to some stories, 635-4121, or we actually have comments open and available yep. on the podcast page. It's called Another Look on the podcast page at theriver953.com. That is theriver953.com. Check out the website, all the news stories we've been covering, award by the way. The award-winning website. The award-winning website, <laughs> because all the news stories we've been covering this whole time are on that website, so you can review all that there. Um, there's also the podcast. There's also our programming. There's a lot of great material on yeah. there. And we're getting ready. Um, when we're done here and get all of this situated, we're getting ready to start production on a brand new podcast series that, mm. that we're going to record the first two segments of when we're done here this afternoon. So you're hearing it on the air now tonight. Um, it should be up on our website at some point in the future. <laughs> I'm not going to give us a date. So descriptive. Yeah, so no. descriptive. But it's going to be fun. It's you, me, and Liz, and, and we're going to talk entertainment and movies and books and what is our first episode is who was the best Batman. So go ahead and send us your uh, thoughts there, who you think was the best Batman. You can text it 6354121 and and I'm sure it's going to be the Batman that I pick. But don't say who it is. Don't you tell me don't you I don't want you to, to I won't I won't, don't, I won't. Yeah, don't and, muddy the waters. All right, why don't you real quick tell them our social media. Where are we? All right, so you can reach out again, text uh, direct and connect 6354121. You can email Dylan news at royalbroadcasting.net. You can email me Janet at the river 953 com. We're on Facebook at the River Nine Five Three. We're on Twitter at the River Nine Five Three. If you go to the River Nine Five Three dot com on the front page, there's a big old graphic that says another look. Click there. The entire page with all of our episodes are there. The last couple have comment availability, so you can comment on them. You can listen to them. You can download them. You can subscribe in the Apple Podcast app, Google Play Music Store. I'm working on getting them on Stitcher and Spreaker and. <sighs> Too many places, places to count. All There's really places. no excuse. Yeah. For I you. deserve those awards. I work yeah. hard. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and if you're listening, there's no excuse for you not to take another look at news from across the Shenandoah Aww. Valley. You see, how, like see how I did that long time. That was a nice segue. Didn't and we? Didn't we talk segue, about segues yeah. last week? Segue. Yeah. So, so uh, there you go, guys. That's all the information that you need to get in contact with us. Please get in contact with us. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, and that's all we got for today. And we'll reach out to you next week again, same time, seven o'clock, for some more. Another look.